YouTube, Shuk and Shinobi here with a review of the TMNT Half Shell Heroes Basic Figures Wave 1, Series 1, whatever you want to call it, the first assortment of figures. And these are the, I don't want to say kitty toys, since the normal toys are for kids too, but every series has this sort of uh, play school-esque uh, chibi-fied figures. Uh, for that age market, TMNT has half shell heroes. Transformers had robot heroes before they moved on to rescue bots. And uh, Marvel makes a uh, superhero squad. Is that still a thing? It was at one point. I know they, they still make figures. Um, and Star Wars had them at one point. Um, they're all over the place. Tons of different franchises do this. And TMNT is no exception. Everyone was like, Shuki, do more TMNT videos. So I decided to bring them back in the cutest way possible with these guys. Now there's nine different assortments for these. Leo, Raph, Donnie, Mikey. A two-pack for the rest of the guys. Um, April is packed with Splinter. Casey is packed with Metalhead. Leatherhead is packed with a Krang. Shutter is packed with a Foot Soldier. Dog Pound is packed with Fish Face. And this makes up your Wave 1. Now, uh, I haven't heard of what is in Wave 2, but we did see more characters at uh, Toy Fair earlier this year. Um, I think we've seen uh, Spider Bites, um, a lot of the Snakeweed, all the various mutants uh, throughout the first two seasons of the show. So hopefully we'll get some more variety in this line because they are freaking cute. Uh, now, as I mentioned, the turtles are packed by themselves with a vehicle of some sort. Uh, instead of packing a brother with a brother and a brother with a brother, they decide to pack a brother with a vehicle. So you have to buy four individual sets to get all four turtles, but everyone else is available in two packs. We will start with Leonardo the Leader in Blue. Uh, he, he's probably my favorite of the turtles, only because I think his vehicle is really cool. Uh, he comes with this like clip-on little wing pack, which I think is actually probably more suitable for Mikey because you can pretend he is Turflidal. But um, you press this little wheel on the back. It doesn't actually spin. It's just like a, it might as well have been a lever. But it flaps. So you can pretend he's flying or whatever. I just think it's kind of cool. I don't know what these are. They kind of look like rear view mirrors or something, but I I don't really know. But we can pop the flight pack off just like that and you can attach this to anyone that will fit even leatherhead fits it doesn't fall on him but it kind of looks like he's got wings coming out of his butt but you can do that and that is always fun so we'll just set that aside um all these have very basic articulation the legs generally move together um you can kind of get them to move on their own but it looks like i'm bending the plastic and i don't want to do that so the legs move on their own, give or take. Um, all the arms are just a sw simple uh, swivel and rotate here um, with varying degrees of success. Some are very easy to move, like Leo's. Some are very difficult to move, like Casey's. Uh, so that will depend on uh, the figure. And then the head does indeed rotate, as tight as that joint is. So you're not going to get a wide range of poses with these cute little guys. But um, enough to look pretty neat on a display. And uh, detail is pretty decent. Uh, they're not too different from each other in terms of the general sculpt of the body here. But um, just look at them. Detail's not too bad. All of the colors match the eyes. Uh, the weapons are generally painted uh, one solid color. But um, everything else is pretty spot on. And the turtles are four different shades of green. So that is always a plus that they managed to do that. Next up we have Donnie. He's in, I forgot what they marketed it as, but it's like this little like lay down car, like a luge or something. But um, this has a little snappy gimmick with the front wheels here. It chomps things. I don't really know. It's not that cool. It's not Leo's flight that cool. Uh, so moving that aside, here is Donnie. I would have liked to have a little bit more of a smile on his face. It looks like he's got some sort of sinister smirk going. But um, he's not all that bad. He's got his bow staff on this hand. The uh, arms are moving together, but they are easily separated. Um, I'm not sure how the figures are built that that manages to happen. Again, the legs can move. Pegs on the legs for the various vehicles. 
But um, pretty cool. He does have an open hand over here for weapons. Um, there aren't any weapons that are removable on these figures. Um, but maybe some of the vehicles and stuff come with little blasters or something that he might be able to hold. But um, he does have a hole right there. So if you have any extra Transformers weapons or anything like that, he can, he can hold some of those. So... Donnie is pretty cool. Raph not only has the most attitude of the team, he's got a pretty cool vehicle too. Uh, he's got this oversized bike, like it's not proportioned well at all, and he doesn't actually even fit him all that well, like he leans forward and wiggles around and stuff. But it's cool, it's a neat little bike for uh, for these scale of toys if you happen to have any more. So it's a cool little bike, uh, these little saw things can uh, pop out when you squeeze up here. So that's exciting. It's like, oh, saws that aren't really all that extended, but won't extend any further past this. That's so exciting. Wow. Uh, but it, it does roll um, as much as it likes to lean. The saws usually prevent it from tipping. Or at least they try to. Um, I really wish these popped out a little more, but I don't see any way of managing to do that. So that is a little bit of a shame. But you got a cool bike, at least. Uh, Raph's kind of cool. He doesn't have the cutouts in his shell like the bigger figures do or the show. But um, he's got a pretty decent expression on his face and then the right shade of dark green. His size are what is the most disappointing. Now, given the target audience for these is toddlers, basically, um, they kind of didn't really want to have huge points. Um, I mean, as you can see from Leo's, his sword blunt edge is very thick. Uh, I guess they didn't want thin points that could break off, so you're stuck with this big sigh with green plastic uh, hanging out in there. It looks like he has webbed sighs or something. Um, that's easily rectified with a knife and some shaving if you want to go ahead and do that. If you care enough, I don't know if I do. Uh, but he's he's not bad. Um, again, same levels of articulation, but he's got a cool little expression on his face, and I kind of dig him. Finally, we have Mikey. I love Mikey. Mikey's my favorite. Uh, he's got this cool skateboard with uh, wings that uh, flip out when you bring out these exhaust pipes. So he's a flying skateboard. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, any of the figures, they all have the pegs on their feet, so any figure can go ahead and pop on the skateboard. So that is kind of cool. Um, all the vehicles are compatible with all the other figures. They're not strictly based on their turtle. Uh, his nunchaku do not um, separate from his hand at all. They are molded in right there. So that's a little bit of a bummer since they're always stuck in this. But I love his expression. Like This is just such a Mikey expression. So they captured that great. He's a nice light green. And um, I really dig him. Like I said, I wish the weapons were removable or at least in a slightly different position. Because uh, I really like these figures, but I don't always want them to have their weapons. Because they are adorable, and you can't really put them in random situations with weapons. Uh, so that's my probably biggest gripe with the four turtles, is that the weapons are not removable, so you can't really uh, do a whole lot with them in terms of uh, play. All right, our first two-pack is April and Splinter, and I can easily say she is probably the worst of the bunch. Um, that's not to say I don't like April, but she's just kind of a mess. Her chest proportions are really weird, and I don't mean that in a really weird, perverted way, but, like, it it just seems weird. I don't know why. It's like she's wearing a big, poofy, like, jacket or, like, a turtleneck or something. Her neck is really long, too. It's really weird. I don't like the way that the arm joint is laid out. It's stuck on this weird angle. And it's actually... Her hand is kind of messed up, really. I mean, her thumb is going all the way down here, which I guess is possible in the human hand. It just looks really, really weird. So I don't know what kind of pose they want you to have her in. But she kind of comes like this. And the arms are doing some weird stuff here. I, I don't really... I don't like her at all. Uh, the expression just really doesn't seem like uh, April from the show to me. She doesn't have the five on her shirt or anything like that. It, like I said, it just it's like a big gray poofy sweater and like a jean skirt or something. And I just don't like April at all. I dig the fact they packed her with a fan. 
since that's her ninja weapon. Uh, so I, I dig that enough, but uh, I don't know. She's just not that great. Uh, you can kind of get her in a more relaxed position. She looks a little bit less derpy, but um, for now, she's my April derp. So Splitter's not that bad. Um, he could have used a little bit more paint. Uh, the turtles seem to have got the uh, the best paint applications. But he's not bad. I don't know what he's doing with this. He's like a stop or something. Or like a, doing some like crazy DBZ stuff like he did in the Season 2 finale. Uh, but uh, he's not bad. Like I said, could use some more paint applications. But he's a pretty cute little rendition of Splinter. Next up we have Casey and Metalhead. Casey's kind of cool. Uh, he is probably my uh, third favorite of the bunch um, outside of the Turtles. I really dig him. Uh, he could use a little bit better of articulation on the arm. It's positioned kind of weird, but it's positioned in a way to where you can kind of give him a kind of karate chop thing with the with the stick here. Um, no bat or anything like that, but he does have a fist. Head sculpt isn't too bad. Um, whether I would have liked to see the mask instead of just the face paint, I'm not really sure. Depends on how they would have pulled it off. But uh, what they did isn't too horrible. Uh, lots of black. Again, these side characters really could use some more paint applications. Uh, but here is Metalhead. He's also doing a stop thing. Uh, and he also has a, a hole in his hand here for additional sort of weapons. Um, the articulation has him bending that way. So there you go. You have that. And it can go upward like that. Rotation in the head, obviously, and then the feet. Uh, Metalhead's kind of cool. I really dig him. Uh, I hope we get to see him again in some way, shape, or form in the series, even though that seems very unlikely. But here's hoping. And we got Leatherhead and a Krang. I love Leatherhead. He's a great character in this show. And I love him in, in this rendition of the of the character. His eyes are, like, beady and wide. Like, he just doesn't understand why he has to be this cute. And he really doesn't like it. I mean, look at that. He's like, what? But anyhow, <laughs> enough of that. I really, I like him a lot. Um, he does have um, enough room in his hands to hold weapons. So there's that. And you get a pretty wide range of articulation up here on the arms. Um, more so than any of the other supporting characters besides Dogpound. Because he shares pretty much the same mold as this guy. Uh, give or take. So pretty cool. Um, his tail looks like it could rotate here. But it can't from what I can tell. Uh, so pretty neat. I really dig Leatherhead a lot. Uh, the Krang is kind of cool too. You get the base robotic body. It doesn't have the uh, the blue suit on or anything. It's carrying a canister of mutagen. And you can kind of see the Krang down here in the stomach. Not the most detailed. But um, the head sculpt is pretty neat. And he's got he's got like the most human stance out of like any of these figures. Uh, so I found that kind of ironic. But uh, you can get some pretty decent arm articulation up in here. And then, of course, the spindly little legs right down there. Next up, we have Shredder and a foot soldier. Uh, given how important Shredder is, I was expecting a little bit more. Like the um, other human characters, he just he's stuck in a really weird pose. Uh, so you can kind of get his arm up in this darn you turtles pose. Uh, pardon that. Uh, and I don't know what you want to do with this hand. It's got a weird bend to it. Um, but again, he's got holes on his hands for additional weapons. So there is that. Um, one thing I want to make note of is the cape. Um, is a pretty thin plastic, so be careful with that. But uh, he's got some difficulty standing. Um, he ends up leaning forward, pretty hunched over, like he's trying to take a poop. Uh, so be a little bit uh, weary of him. I can't really get him to... To look all that menacing. One detail I do want to point out is that they actually two-toned his face. So he's got the normal skin over here and then the burnt skin over here. Uh, so that is a very nice touch that they didn't have to do for a line like this aimed at preschoolers. Uh, so I actually really appreciate that. It's pretty nice. And uh, he's not really missing a whole lot in terms of detailing either. So Shredder's a pretty cool figure even if he's got some weird uh, standing issues. The Foot Soldier is also... Pretty nicely detailed. He's got a butter knife-esque sword going on over here. And these sort of bug-like eyeballs going on here at the foot logo on his head. 
So not too bad at all. He can hold a weapon in this hand. Kind of raise his butter knife up in the air. Go in, I demand toast. And then finally we have Dog Pound and Fish Face, which was the hardest to find for me. Um, I don't know if it's like that everywhere, but I had a little bit of a harder time finding these guys. Um, but they're neat. Uh, like I said, Dog Pound shares a mold. They're very similar to Leatherhead. Uh, they both have that same sort of stature to him. Dog Pound's face is the most hysterical thing I've ever seen in a Turtles line. Um, he's like got this beard going on and this weird smirk. And I'm not really sure what kind of emotion he's trying to purvey, but it looks like he's going to rip me off in a used car deal or something. Uh, I, just, I really like it. It's, it's kind of nuts. Um, but um, again, just like Leatherhead, he's got quite a range of motion in his arms. Uh, thanks to being very free. Uh, there's nothing really kibbling him into submission. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, he is a little bit top-heavy, but uh, thankfully his feet are so big that he doesn't really have any problems standing. Um, maybe a little bit of paint uh, would have been nice, but um, overall, at the end of the day, Doc Pound's kind of cool. Fish Face, I have a lot of problems with. Um, his figure itself isn't all that bad. Um, he is also in this weird sort of pre-posed sort of mess that a lot of these figures end up being in. Does have a hand open for weapons. Dog Pound has one too. Um, his feet, I don't know if mine are just like that because it was stuck in the package like this, but they don't really line up all that well. So uh, Standing still isn't a problem. He just doesn't really stand flat-footed. The color's a little bit off. Fish face in the show is more of a purple, like a deeper purple sort of pink. But um, this one is a very bright, process magenta-esque pink. Uh, so it's it's all right. He's got a pretty derpy face on as well, but uh, still an overall okay figure. So overall, despite their target market, I actually really dig these guys. I've always been a fan of the chibi sort of figures. I was huge into uh, Robot Heroes when Transformers was doing it. Not so much into Rescue Bots because uh, they kind of moved away from the robot figures uh, for that line that were in this sort of chibi style. Uh, but I, I always have a soft spot for uh, for these kind of things. I'm surprised I haven't picked up any of the Marvel ones, honestly. Uh, so to see a franchise I like so much, like Turtles, get uh, the treatment is always pretty cool. And I wasn't really going to pick these up. I was trying to hold off, but um, I decided to cave and uh, pick up the basic figures at least. And uh, for $6.97, they're not that bad. The Turtles get some pretty cool vehicles. Uh, Donnie's is a little messed up. I don't like that one a whole lot, but the other three are pretty neat. And the other ones, for six ninety seven, you get two figures, which isn't all that bad at all. And given the fact that they have pretty basic articulation, it is nice as well, since for that price point with two figures, I wouldn't be expecting a whole lot of, uh, movement with those. But, um, at the end of the day, they're detailed, fairly nice. Some could use a little bit more paint, particularly the ones that are in the two-packs. But uh, they're still pretty cool, and the turtles end up looking pretty sharp. Now, this is a very expansive line. It goes well beyond these figures I'm reviewing right now. There's a Shell Razor. There's several other vehicles. I think there's a more of a base play set coming out. There's um, bigger figures that talk. There's a very large-scale Leo. I know that, uh, that talks as well. They aren't the voices that are in the show. But um, they're trying decently, I suppose. Um, but Half Shell Heroes is a pretty expansive line. So if you have a toddler that really digs the turtles, or uh, you just have a soft spot for some cheapified figures, then uh, check these out. They're not that bad. For six ninety seven, you're getting a pretty decent deal. Uh, so take a look if you're interested uh, i will be picking up more of the basic figures as they're released i do not plan on picking up vehicles or any of the larger talking figures or anything like that i might pick up the shell razor just because i'm a little bit of a sucker for the shell razor but um, we shall see. Whatever I do pick up, I do plan on reviewing. If you want to see the mainline turtle reviews from me, please let me know. I'm really busy, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get to them, but I am still collecting the basic figures from the normal TMNT line. So if you do want to see those and more turtle reviews from me, please let me know in the comments below, and I will see what I can pull off. So thanks for watching, take care, and have a great one. Bye.